Dependency injection is the core feature of Spring Framework and we are going to look at that in this tutorial. We shall be learning dependency injection by writing some code. Say we are supposed to write some class for sending emails. And how do we go with that? Let's create a package for containing the email functionality. And in that, let's uh, create a class, say mock mail sender. Because we are not going to write the actual code for sending mail now, so I am naming it as mock mail sender. Let me copy the code from a previous place where I have coded it and the code looks like this in which I am using the logger that is org.slf4j.logger and the logger factory and now the code looks like this so this piece of code will do nothing but log the mail onto our console. Let me quickly tell you here that Spring Boot by default uses logback for logging. And to know more about logging, you can visit this place of the reference manual of Spring Boot. And uh, logback by default is configured to write to our console um, but if you want you can configure it in different ways that we can see later in some other class so enough about logging let's now come back to the send functionality so the send method here is doing nothing but logging the subject and body and the sending mails to everything onto the console let us now create an interface and we will use that interface in our application but not this mock mail center class but because maybe we have another implementation of that interface later on and we use that so for doing that i will go to refactor and then i have extract interface here and then let me give the name of the interface as mail mail center and this will be the method. Let me click OK. And now here is the interface. Good, up to now. So now we are going to use it. Say now let us use it here. Say first let me create a field. And then let me use that here. Mail sender dot uh, send. Say I want to send a mail to so now this code should send a mail to abc at example.com and uh, let us see if it works. Uh, so for that, let's first start our application. The application has started. Let's open a browser and let's visit our website. And if we see the logs, Here you see the mail is sent. Now with this code with us, we are now ready for discussing on dependency injection of Spring. Let us first understand what is called dependency. You see here the root controller class, the code that we have written, we are instantiating an instance of mock mail sender and so our code is depending on the mock mail sender class. In other words, our code is tightly coupled with the mock mail sender class. 
and uh, if we want to change our mail sender implementation if we want to have some other mail sender like suppose a real mail sender which will be the real which will be sending real mails in that case we need to change the code of the root controller class and that is not desirable let me now show you the spring way of doing the same thing in spring instead of we instantiating a concrete class like this we shall be injecting it I'm going to explain in a moment what all this is but let me first uh, write the code and then uh, show it to you running and then I'm going to explain you what is happening and the other change we need to do to get it running in the spring way is simply to annotate this mock mill center with component annotation Now with this, if we relaunch the application and then refresh it, it ran and you see that it has worked. So this is spring magic. And let me explain you now how it works. When a Spring application starts and thereafter, Spring maintains a pool of objects at a place called Application Context. Application Context. It will have a pool of objects like our mock mail sender and at places our code can request for the reference to these objects for example here our mail sender field by this resource annotation is asking for a reference to a object to an object of type mail sender from the application context and it is given and so our code works so this is one side of the story and the other side of the story is when and how the application context is created and objects are put into that the application context is typically built when a spring application starts by looking at the metadata provided for building application context. The kind of metadata includes annotations like component annotation here, XML files and Java configuration classes and we are going to look at all those later on. But uh, for this example, by we giving this component annotation, an object of this class went into the application context. So in this video we had an introduction to the dependency injection of Spring and in the next video we are going to cover dependency injection in more depth.